Some of the methodology is coming clear. What I should have done when I had the whole front end off of the car was set the hood to alignment for distance, for length first, clearance to the cowl. Because now I have a tight, too tight of a clearance between the fender and this wing. This wing right here. So I'm going to take this trim piece off. Well, things are getting more and more complicated all the time. This has a lip here. You can see, it's not in line with the door. Same problem I have on the other side. Got a bit of a gap here, more than I'd like. This is really tight with the door. But looking at the line, it's low here, it's low here. And then it gets higher and it gets ever more tighter. So I've loosened this wing. That's adjustable. And it's low here. Also it flares out. That's a different problem. So what I'm gonna do first part, since it's tight here, not much to play with there. Down here, the bottom of the door, you can see there's already two shims in there. So that's a bit of a concern because it needs more. And there's no shims up here. Uh, actually, maybe one, one thin one. So, I'm going to add some shim to it, push it back a bit, and see if I can get it to line up a little better. So I put an extra about a 40 thou shim down the bottom. I'm thinking I need 40 up top and 80 down the bottom or so because when I close the door, uh, I mean that's tight. Could go back a little bit more, but it hasn't helped really in this corner. And I still got this problem with the hood. It's got more clearance up there than I want, and less clearance down there than I want. I can't push it in even with the door, because the door will clip it. So, I'm going to try that. Two more shims. Sad thing is, I actually added a bead to the end of the door to make it fit the hole properly, because it had a huge gap before. So, I may have outsmarted myself. Not the first time. One thing I definitely don't like is how wide these shims are getting. I'm not sure why it's like that. Unless it's... It is dinted a bit there. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Anyway, I still have to put shims in the top one. I've got that shim there. Which is about the right thickness, I believe. And we've got the door. Don't forget the front hinge is loose at the moment. I can lift it up and latch it. It's still not completely right here. I do have better clearance here, though. So once I put that shim in, that should improve. But I really hesitate to go any further. I don't want it any thicker down on the bottom in that hinge for shims. So I mean, it's still I've still got that problem to sort out what's going on there. I might be able to twist the door a bit, but it's it would have to come in on the bottom because this is already sticking out just slightly. It's good along here. It's good along here, a little bit in there, actually. So, I mean, it is an old car, so it could have been banged up pretty well before I got it. I did have to use the Porta Power to extend the door frame, or the door opening, rather, about an eighth of an inch. Um, I thought I had measured them before when I was putting the car together, but 
apparently not because there was an eighth of an inch difference so that had something to do with its um, lack of clearance up there at the front so I will continue adjusting and see if I can get that straight note and then I've got the wings line up and complete the hood so that's pretty complete it's mostly just trying to get the door to clear it properly oh how things grow here's another aspect of the fender adjustment that I didn't think about underneath well first I'll start off here this frame holds the radiator but it also holds the fenders it determines how far out this panel sits and it determines the anchor point from here along the inside on the frame on this inner fender as well as at the back right where is it there is that it no that's not it right there hard to see and there is one single bolt that does all that underneath here you see that one bolt that holds the radiator shroud and frame and then determines the anchor point for everything it's got a fairly large slot in it so it can move back and forth and sideways and uh, now I have it centered fairly far back it's the best I could do this panel the top of the grill is too far forward now there is a little bit here I can move it back but I'm still limited with this part here so I can get a little bit more there possibly and I might be able to get a little bit more here but I'm still going to be limited by this so somebody at one point looks like has re-welded this and the car was in a front-end accident there was a huge dent up at the nose of the hood quality workmanship it was pushed in at least an inch and a half maybe two inches and they just filled it all with lead they didn't try to bump it out or anything so I got rid of the lead put it closer to the shape I needed and then refilled it with lead so it's less than a quarter inch now whereas it was an inch and a half to two inches before the hood's a little lighter although you'd never know it there's three more bolts I found each side that will limit the travel or can underneath this wing there's a little winglet here the bolts to the body that also bolts to this fender here so if it's rubbing up against the body mount like this one is this is part of it here this part of this little side piece that will stop it from going back as well because it's bolted to the fender as well as to the body of the car so that's an inflexible joint I'll take I'll take this wing off so obviously you're gonna have to do some adjusting in here to get more room for the fender to come back this is the old style battery box it's bolted to the frame so that does not interfere there's a gap in the front between the inner fender and the box of the battery box the front side of the battery box so I don't have to undo that now that I have things in the position I want this shroud gets locked at the top according to the position of the fender um, and down underneath as well so those all have to be tightened up down inside this inner fender on the frame side behind the wheel you can see some there there's a row of those then there's the bolts at the front and up top but the, initially I'll tighten these lock the position and then tighten the front one 
and then work along the inside underneath. But now it's pretty close to where I want it. It matches the line of the door. The hood comes down. It's a little further forward than it was, but that's because I had to play with the uh, front panel that uh, I'll show you in a minute. So that part is pretty good. We've got a pretty good gap here. The fender wing slides in underneath the fender. The hood is pretty much where it needs to be. I did that before. So now this panel here is for far enough back that the lip of the hood trim clears it. And that was hitting before. Not what you want. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of chain and I've just hooked it on the front. This, this whole frame with the radiator is mounted on one point down below so it can actually swivel. So you have to get it in the right position. So some of the problem is that the hoses are a little bit long. You know, you wouldn't think that would cause a problem, but that's some of the force holding the radiator forward. So I've wrapped a chain with a cloth around the uh, crossover exhaust manifold. I've put in a hook with a nut and clamped that up. So I'm basically shortening the chain. The engine right now does not have a transmission on it, so it's not tied at the back, but it weighs about 750 pounds. So I think that's enough ballast to pull the radiator back. It's working anyway. Things are lined up better than they were before. So I'll keep going with that and lock it in position. Lock that up, make sure it's in far enough, and then I'm going to lock up the front and start bolting up this piece here so that it doesn't move forward. Right now it's about where I want it. The hood lip here clears. Get, get it out of the light there. This lip clears here now, so that should be good. Pulling it back on this side, obviously things are going to twist slightly. slightly. So I had, I had it pulled back far enough that this side all lined up. So this is all good, it's all bolted, tightened up. Now this one, I found I could not move the fender far enough forward to get a good line between these two. It's back just a little bit too far. You can see because the, the wing is going to be very tight. This will, will slide back a bit, but it's going to be very tight here. So, I found that by loosening that, it actually allows the fender to come more forward. It was pulling everything back, and I think what was happening is it was binding in here. The center fender was hitting the front strut and uh, not allowing anything to come forward. So I'm in the process of adjusting that. As far as basic adjustment goes, I think we're as close as we're going to get. There's a few uh, mismatched panels here, but it has to do with its history. I did say the hood was bashed before when I bought the car, but also the fenders had been crumpled nicely. They showed signs of wrinkles from pretty much halfway up front and lots of uh, panel beating and lead filling went in back whenever that accident happened. All work I had to repair. But that's as good as I can get it to be clear of the door. And because this is bent, the hood seems wide at the top. So I can't really do much about that. I'm not prepared to go through and try and bend this whole thing back to get the profile right. So that's where it's going to sit. I have lots of patching to do and chips. But I have it in line here with the fender. It does flare out a bit here, but everything's been bent previously, so I can pry this out a bit more and adjust the bolts underneath. There's uh, two bolts about here. There's another bolt around here that determine where the fender, where the hood sits. That I can adjust yet. It matches here pretty much. I'll show you what's wrong with it in a second. This is about the same. 
matches the profile as best I can. Uh, this should go down further, but doesn't seem to want to because it's it's high here and it matches perfectly there. So not sure how much I can do about that either. And this part here can go in a bit further. I will do that. But this is the concern. The fenders, where they sit, this little uh, stainless steel, or chrome piece, I guess in this case, the grill is stainless steel. This chrome piece is bolted to the fender, and the line that runs across here no way matches the hood. And there's nothing I can do about that because this profile here all matches. And it's worse on this side. So I'm not sure what exactly I can do yet. And the fender already comes up high here. Matches along in here. This, I can't get it far enough away that the hood trim actually clears the profile that sticks out. So that is an issue that has yet to be solved. And the out of place trim piece up there by the windshield, it's on the cowl, that's just two bolts inside under the dash. That's easily adjusted. I don't have to put the hood latch on yet and adjust that. Start with the hood, get that lined up with the cowl, and then make everything else match it. Seems to be the best way to do it. When I put the car together, I put the fenders on, and then I tried to get the hood to match. And that was years ago, and I never could. So, hood first, everything else second. That's what I'd recommend. Now to adjust the wings. You can see everything's looking better than it did before, which is nice. Not perfect, but any further adjustments are just going to cause damage, I think. So, I think I'll have to put up with that. So down here you can see the wing is too far in. Fortunately there's an adjustment for that. This, these wings adjust for tilt through three bolts. One at the back, one here in the, basically the middle, pretty close to the middle, and one at the front. There are nuts inside. They're 9 sixteenths. You'll need a long socket, a deep socket and about a six inch extension. The last one, last adjustment is right here. So that can adjust in and out. So that's what I'll do. It's as adjusted as it's gonna get. From a distance, looks pretty good. So keep your distance. So the rings are back on. I had to bend the studs that mount them because now it, pushing the fender back pushed this back. So you see it doesn't quite line up here. It doesn't quite line up there. I don't think anybody's going to notice that. But you can see it's crept down. So I've got to work on that. I tighten these all up, but somehow it's moved down again. So I have yet to do that. But the gaps are as good as they're going to get. It's a lot more lined up than it was. The hood is pretty much centered. You can see the curve is a little bit off there. No doubt from getting hit. So the center chrome is pretty much centered. A little bit off there by the windshield. Unfortunately, I can't do any better here. This is just not going to happen. And I think that's from the fenders being dented when I got it, me reforming it to match, but things weren't lined up. So this crease here should probably be higher. And I'm not going to change it. Those fenders, I spent weeks on those fenders. They were just a nightmare. So this side is better, but still not perfect. 
So, in the future, perhaps. So here as well, things are lined up a lot better than they were. The wing fits pretty well on the bottom on this one. Well, the same thing, I had to bend the mounting studs because it's pushed back, as you can see there. i got to put the chrome back on, of course. But other than that, pretty happy with it. Happy enough to say it's perfect. Perfect enough. Well, I hope that helped. So the sequence of events here was I lined up the hood as centered as I could to the cowl and the proper gap by adjusting the hinge pivots that were inside here. Then I had to pull it in to match the door. There's three bolts. One, two right around here, one around here. That's adjustable. Then I had to pull the rad support back. I'm going to put the camera down. So then I had to pull the rad support back. Make sure the fan doesn't strike anywhere. After loosening the fender completely, both sides. Then adjusting everything, tying it all down, tightening it up, and taking this, took this hinge out when I was working on the, or this latch rather, when I was working on the hood, just so I didn't have to keep unlatching it. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or even notify, or any of the above, or all of the above. Thank you.